Hi, I'm Dr. Pennywitt, and welcome to another installment of at the Pennywitt Center. Years ago, when my two younger children were at their youngest, Josiah and Nicole, we had two animals, a little, a little miniature schnauzer, his name was Howard, and a gray tabby cat named Chloe. Now, Chloe, even though she was the smallest of the animals, was the matriarch of the animal kingdom, and nothing happened in the animal kingdom without Chloe's explicit approval. This little kitty came along and lived under the pine tree in front of our house. She was a great mouser, she hunted, she obviously kept herself very well fed because she was larger than Chloe, even though she was a kitten, when the Pennywit children, against my wishes, smuggled her into our house. Well, smuggle her in, they did, and she became a part of the animal menagerie of the Pennywood clan. Well, as it stood, Chloe was still the matriarch of the animal kingdom. And Babe and Chloe had to eat together. Well, the animals didn't eat, even though the food was in their bowl, until after Chloe and her infinite queenly wisdom decided that it should be so. And when she finally did meander away from the food bowl, I'm telling you, it was a sight to see. Babe would come barreling around the corner, and we had wood floors at the time, and she'd slide as she came around the corner. She'd jump up on the shelf where the cat food was and bury her face into that bowl, and she would eat until every morsel of food was gone. Well, this happened for quite some time, and Chloe was quite a bit older, and Chloe finally passed on and Howard passed on because he was as old as Chloe was, but Babe was still a kitten, so we thought, well, this little girl is gonna slow down her eating habits because the animals are gone and she doesn't have to, you know, gorge herself wondering if Chloe's gonna take her food away from her. Well, that never happened. She kept eating and eating, and right now she stands at 15 pounds, but she was closer to 20 when we started her on her diet. She doesn't overeat, she just won't stop. And the reason is because she remembers what her life was like living under the pines in front of our house. She had to hunt for her food. She didn't know when she was going to get another meal. And to this day, she still feels the same way. So what we had to do was I called the pet food manufacturer and I said, what can I do to keep this cat from eating so much? Because Whenever we put food in the bowl, it would be gone. She would eat so much, she would she gack it back up again. And the pet food manufacturer said, get a rock. Put the rock in her food bowl so she has to dig out each morsel to eat. So this is what we did. We got a rock, and this is the famous rock that I've written about in so many of my articles. And it's the rock that we put in her food bowl. And babe, this is Babe, she's not a willing participant right now, but this is her. She is quite a handful, and you don't pick her up a whole lot <laughs> because she's very heavy. Well, recently, maybe about a year ago, I was sitting at the kitchen table early one morning, fellowshipping with the Lord. I get up before anyone else does, and I get my Bible and my cup of coffee. And I had the blinds open, and I'm sitting there reading the Bible, drinking my coffee, and the sunlight shining through. Uh, the window onto my Bible, and it was just such a real serene setting, and I was fellowshipping with God, really enjoying myself, and Babe meandered out and picked out the little kernels with her paw and was eating them, and the Lord spoke within me, and he said, you know, Babe needs this rock, and he went on to explain, she still doesn't realize that the food is going to be there, but she doesn't need to gorge herself. So when I get up in the morning, there's Babe waiting for her morning portion. And around seven o'clock at night, there's Babe waiting for her evening portion. You see, she's not like other cats who, who uh, can just have a large bowl of food and eat whenever they want. She can't get over the fact that there's always going to be food there. And so we have to put this rock in her food bowl to keep her from gorging herself. And the Lord explained to me, you know, she needs this rock. And I started thinking about it, 
How many of us need a rock in our lives or something to, to block us from really enjoying ourselves? How many of us really need to work on finding out what that rock is and getting that rock out of our lives so we can be free? You see, babe, even though she's healthy, she really isn't free. She has to have that rock and she has to have her morning and evening portions of food. And what I'm saying today is this. Do you have a rock in your life that you need to remove? Do you have something that's keeping you from being free? It can be any number of things. At the Pennywood Center, we can help you find out what that rock is and get that rock out of your life. FortWorthChristianCounseling.com DallasChristianCounseling.com Give us a call. Let us help you remove the rock from your life. Thank you. See you next time on at the Pennywood Center.